Good evening and welcome to the school committee meeting of Monday, May 22nd. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. My table moved. Are you all set? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll go on to the acceptance of the minutes for the meeting of May 8th. Motion uh, to accept the minutes of May 8th. Uh, second. All those in favor? That's a vote. Nothing under audience. We'll go into reports for financial reports for February for the school department, Rockland High School, student activities, Rogers Middle School, student activities, and the cafe. Four motions to approve. And four seconds. All those in favor? And for reports under the department, um, department reports for January and February, we have Art, Mrs. Thompson, Athletic, Mr. Kimball, Computer Technology, Mr. Wells, Dean, Mr. Damon, English 9 through 12, Ms. Donovan, Foreign Language, Mrs. McAllister, The Library, Mrs. Kemp, Math 9 through 12, Mr. Casagrande, Middle School, Mr. Griffin, Music, Mr. Piazza, Radio and TV Station, Ms. Breeden, Science, Ms. DeCanzio, Social Studies, Mr. McAllister, Daycare, Mrs. Tate, Special Education, Mrs. McGonigal, Health and Physical Education, Mrs. Newcomb, and the middle school is Mrs. Glenn. <clears throat> Thank you for taking the time to put all these reports together. It always um, is exciting for us to be able to read and see what is going on um, in our classrooms. And before you, you approve, I just wanted to sure. note they're for March, April, not January, February. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I know you were, you were reading nope, off the agenda, sorry, right? The I was. reports are dated March, March April. April. Yeah. Thank you for no correcting me. Okay. Any questions or comments no. besides that? Nope. Okay. Do we need a motion? No, nope, because okay. they're not financial. Right. They're just updated. But thanks okay. for checking. Yeah. Um, and then next we have our rental report for the building rentals. Also, we don't need a vote. Um, it's just information because it's financial um, for the rentals. So as always, the schools are um, so busy with all different things. It's fun to read and see what's happening um, between dance and um, all kinds of things going on um, in our schools, in our gyms. So thanks to the town and um, our own people here at RPS for using our building so wisely. Um, on to old business, we have the Phelps Elementary School update. Miss Emily. Great. Um, so as you can tell, uh, Memorial Park is down. Um, they found some unexpected delay, or they're having some unexpected delays because they found an old septic system underneath Memorial Park. Um, so they're working this week to get that graded and filled in and moving on to the next step. Um, also this week on the Memorial Park site, they're placing footings, retaining walls, and ramps. Um, and then we've had a few questions regarding what the field will be after, and there will be a multi-purpose turf field um, for football, soccer, and lacrosse. Um, and then obviously, and also um, the Parks Department is will be handling the softball and baseball fields because they have received some updates also as part of this project. Um, Jefferson will be demoed Jul um, July two in <laughs> July. <laughs> we are in 2023, Emily. <laughs> um, and once that uh, school is demoed, the Parks Department will get it back after um, the project, but that will just be a grass field, so it's up to the Parks Department what will uh, become of that. Um, and then just Phelps, the punch list is still going strong. Um, I guess recently there has been some issues with the AC, um, but the building engineers are working to take care of those issues, um, as always. And that was all I have. Okay, great. Um, just to update, too, because we built Phelps on a field, we traded with the park department mm -hmm. to build Phelps on that field, and that's why they are getting Jefferson back. So in part of the whole beginning process of us building Phelps, we did a land swap. And we took the land that's on Phelps, and they got the land that's on Jefferson. So that's why it becomes park department um, land. So just to clarify, I think now that Memorial Park is done, I know I'm getting a lot of questions of what's going on. Um, so thank you, Emily, for mm -hmm. taking the time to get us some answers. So, great. 
And that's it. Any questions? No. Okay. We can move on <coughs> to completed fundraisers. We have um, under the preschool pack, we, they had a McDonald's dine-in night on May 9th. They earned $560. Um, so congratulations to them. It's a lot of sandwiches and french fries. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thanks for all that um, attended McDonald's for them. Under new business, we have um, Mrs. Kendra Donovan here with us for a request for a new AP psychology textbook. You can come on up to the podium. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. So I have three options here. Um, I'll speak a little bit about each, and then I can leave these for you to like, take a look at them. Thank you. Um, so the first one I'm hoping is, this is my primary option. Um, this book that I have here is um, the Myers Psychology for the AP course. Um, this is actually the only textbook currently in production that even addresses the AP frameworks. Um, so that's why this is my number one option. Um, this book goes through um, the updated one. So this one here that I have for you is actually not the edition that will be ordered. The edition that will be ordered is actually October 2023 publication. Um, and they're updating that to basically meet the new AP frameworks exactly how they're laid out on the test. So um, there's nine units for AP psychology. So that textbook actually has um, nine sections in it. You'll see the layout in this particular version. Um, and it's great because it actually has some sample test questions and some um, free response questions. So uh, it basically follows the framework to a T, which is nice. Uh, this second version that I have, which would be my second choice, um, is called Psychology. It's the eighth edition of this um, by Peter Gray. This is a very rigorous text. This seems very college level to me. Um, I like this book. It's more expensive than the first option. Um, it doesn't follow the AP course framework um, like the other one because it wasn't designed for that. Um, there is still research methods in this though, which is a big component of the um, AP psychology exam. So this would be my second option. Um, and my third option is just this Psychology 13th edition by David Myers. Um, he's actually the same author as the AP textbook, the first one that I showed you, um, but this is more geared towards just the regular CP college student taking a psychology elective. Um, it doesn't have as much of a focus on research methods, which is one con I see with the text um, because there's, there's a huge component of that on the exam. but. Um, he is the author of both textbooks, so there are some shared similarities with those. Um, I also have price, price quotes for all of those for a class set for each. Um, and I have a copy here if you, if you need have, it. We have it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> all right. There any, any questions, questions? ladies? Um, the 50 textbooks, could you explain, um, I think, the enrollment, what it looks like typically year over year, and uh, I'm guessing is one session. I'm not really sure. So Yeah, so next year I actually have two sessions, um, and right now it's at 44 students. Um, that could change depending on if student schedules change at the start of the school year. Oh, excellent. I didn't realize it was such a, a big class. That's yeah, great. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Um, is AP psychology something the kids need to get into college? Um, no, so this is an elective class. That's However, what I if they take the course and pass with a three, four, or five, they can actually get the credit for college without actually having to pay for the credit, which is a great money saver. Oh, right. Remember. That was the other thing I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. Thank you. So AP psych is similar <clears throat> in its position in the AP offerings to AP Economics. Okay. There are two courses that, as a high school principal or director of English, we can get students who may not be your top tier students right. into an AP experience through AP Psych and through AP Economics, and there are some other AP courses. But where with AP Chem or AP Bio, you may not have that option academically. Your math skills may not be up to the par. Right. So it's a course that we really like to see kids take a little risk and push themselves. Right. So it's very exciting. And I do know that the enrollment 
since the announcement has been made that Ms. Donovan is going to be teaching it, the enrollment has, <laughs> has, the enrollment has pretty, pretty much doubled. Oh, wow. Yeah, See. so we are now are offering two sections, so it's very exciting. Okay. Very yeah. I think that it's an um, interesting class. I know when I took Great it, I class. thought it was like one of the most fascinating classes that I had to have. So yeah. um, I'm hoping that the kids feel that way as well. Yes, and right now we don't currently have um, an AP-specific text for it. We just have kind of an older version of a, just a regular psychology textbook. Right. So you would need this approved by when? Like, are you? does it need to be quick? Um, I think so because of the funds. I think that we're hoping to use it would be COVID, some of the COVID money. We want to spend it this year. Um, okay. So, so, so but do you want it approved? Do you want to skip the first reading? If everyone is comfortable, because we didn't get to look at the book ahead of time, I, I'm okay with that if you're all okay with it. It's, it's To me, it, it sort of makes sense. It's the only one with that um, option in it. Financially, it's not the most expensive version. Um, so to me, that's like two checks already. Go ahead. I guess my only concern is teaching to the test. Are sure. they going to act? Are they going to be able to um, academically it, use that same when they get into college? Because they will then be missing out. If they do pass the AP, they'll be missing out on the intro to psych. So will they? I'm trying to th say this in a in a way. Um, will they not be losing out if you if you took book two? which is a little bit more college academic, has more, it's not really teaching to the test, to so the exam. The reason why I like this one is because um, the AP exam does have research methodology, which I'm, I was a psychology major in, in and college. And that's huge, that was I my, understand. Yes. One of my degrees. Um, and I would say that research methods alone for my personal experience as a psychology major was really important. Um, this one does cover that. It's not as in-depth as this particular textbook. Um, I would say, though, that this will be a jumping off point for me. So my hope is obviously to cover what it would be like for them to take an intro to psych course um, between, you know, my lectures and also the labs that we do and the activities that we do in class. Um, so this will be kind of a, a place for the kids to be able to take these home and use and learn some of the material before coming to class and then kind of using class as a space for us to practice. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So are we comfortable to yes. vote? Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that will save her. Now, will this book, you said it's being printed in October, but you're starting in September. We are, yes. So my hope right now is just to use some of the earlier material. The first unit is basically just an intro to the big names of psychology um, and some of the basic principles. So okay. I'm hoping that I can cover that as sort of an intro in September. Um, and then by the time October hits, we'll have the textbook. You'll be ready. Kind of dive in from there. OK. All right. So if you're good with how you're going to do this, then. Um, all right. I will entertain a motion to approve this. Meyer Psychology for the AP Exam 4th Edition, publishing in October 2023. Motion to approve. And a second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. <clears throat> okay. Transportation update, Dr. Cron. Excellent. I hope. I have to turn it on. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Let me see. I don't know if I turned it on. I think I did something different. There we go. I saw the green. There we go. I was going to say, it's doing something yeah. Okay. So we are catapulting ourselves into 2023, <laughs> and we are going to do bus registration online. So. That's a really big deal. It is and a I huge want to thank deal. Noel Novio <laughs> and Jane for setting all this up and all the work that they've been doing, Melissa Humphreys and all the folks that have had a hand in this. So we will register for the buses through Aspen this year. Okay. Um, incoming kindergartners will register through a Google Doc because they're not into Aspen yet. Okay. So the families are not set up on Aspen. So kindergarten will continue to, to use um, a Gmail account. So two, me two emails will go out this week. One with the Aspen login and one with the registration link for um, kindergarten. Translation assistance will be available for all families and registrations are due by July 7th.
Bus stops and times will be posted in Aspen after August 18th. I um, want to talk a little bit about costs. It's our goal. I can't read that. I know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to it's say It's our that goal. That's okay. It's our goal to provide transportation to all students. So we take, and I, the school committee has always taken a, an extremely liberal approach to busing, and we pay for busing because we want our kids in school. So it's mm -hmm. sort of a philosophical and financial commitment that we've made to transportation. Um, but should we reach an overflow situation, which we haven't so far, but we are close in a couple places, we will revert to state eligibility requirements in assigning seats. Um, so we are only required to transport students K to six who live more than two miles away from school. So we would apply this two mile rule to seven to 12 if overflow occurred. We don't anticipate that it's gonna happen, but it could. Just wanna put it on everyone's radar. Our fees remain the same, 275 for a single student, capped at 475 for a family, unless one of the following applies. So if you're on state assistance, we will waive that. If your student lives more than two miles away from school, K to eight, um, and kindergarten stops will be as close to students' homes as possible, and one to 12 will continue to be depot style. So for kindergarten parents, we may not pick you up right in front of your home, but it will be very, very close. We're doing our best, but we can't stop at every home. Summary. Mm -hmm. um, please, parents, look for an email with an Aspen login information from Melissa Humphrey. Melissa is our new Sarah Hologatus, our data manager. She's doing an amazing job. Um, look for an email with Aspen instructions from Noel Novio, who is our transportation coordinator and please register by July 7th. If you have a question about transportation, please reach out to Noel at 781-871-8418, or you can email her at buses at rocklandschools.org. Um, Noel starts working on buses at about six o'clock every morning. Mm. Uh, it's incredible, and we thank her very much for all of her efforts and work. She's done a great job, and I'm excited that we're kind of stepping up and doing all of this digitally now. And that's all I have on transportation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cron. You're welcome. Any questions, thoughts? Just a, an admin question, I guess. Mm -hmm. Both of those emails will go out right after each other? Yes. So there's not like a lag? And, right, Okay. right, yep. All right, <clears throat> so then how do we view it on this side of the fence? So she gets all the emails and then, I know they used to have like spread outs on paper of the routes and all of that. Is there software that we had to get in order to? We, we work with the bus company. We give the bus company the addresses. They run it through a computer. The computer spits out what it says we should do. Okay. And then we look at it and go, you gotta be kidding me. And we fix it. Okay. And then we hand it out. Okay. So that's how it works so that's in reality. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Software does it, but it doesn't do a great job because right. it doesn't well, understand. Stroke, well, this right. is a one way and it's really skinny here and you can't turn around. And right. so, um, yeah, we fix it and then we send it out. And then we're constantly tweaking. Right. So, you know, thank right. you to families. 99.9% .9 of you are extremely patient. Thank you <laughs> for that other 0 0.001. Please be patient and kind to Noel. And I know that the ladies in the office, I know myself, I've gone out um, a couple of times and driven to see yeah. how the bus is coming, which angle, traffic, and this, and I know the ladies in the office are doing that as well, um, trying to make sure that our kiddos are certainly getting on the bus and yep. waiting at that bus stop as safely as possible. Um, and I, I think that I wanted to reiterate that we do go above and beyond. It is our belief the kids can't learn if they're not here. Um, we do try as much as possible to get them here um, on us as much as we can. Um, so I wanted to shout out to the ladies here sitting with me and past school committee members that have made that um, our belief for years yeah. um, to make sure that transportation is a priority. We added a bus, so we're up to 11 buses next year. Wow. And so I think for the public, just to try to understand, we're running 11 buses for three different levels Mm -hmm. But we're also transporting on maybe as many as 10 vans. We're, right. we're transporting a number of special education students and students with specific needs. So there's a whole lot of transportation going on and it's, it's a really big deal. And it's gotten very expensive. 
as everyone knows, but yes. transportation for any industry has become a real expense. Right. But it's something that we're managing very carefully. Um, we've done a lot of work trying to transfer kids who were on vans to big buses and just to limit and maximize what we're doing. Right. So I think that we're doing a really good job with it and I'm um, very pleased and appreciative of Jane and and Noel and all the team. Absolutely. Yeah. They are certainly working their tails off. And to the van drivers, too, we appreciate you. Absolutely. Um, I know those van drivers have that van. It's theirs. It's their heart. It's those kids are their, their own kids. You know, they feel that that's who they're there to drive safely for and protect. So we can't say enough about them as well. Yep. So anything else? Thoughts? And I'd just like to add that if you're thinking about busing and there's room, I would definitely recommend busing because traffic um, is a concern. Mm -hmm. um, for many residents of and especially we're combining all the schools officially next year for the Phelps so it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit busier than usual so busing is definitely a great option we have that bus loop behind the elementary school so hopefully that will alleviate traffic as well yeah much safer right right yeah right. thank you um, could we get um, before our last school committee meeting of the year I know the registration deadline isn't till the 7th but yep. could we get some numbers of what it's looking like sure. if yeah. there's an increase from maybe a particular area now that maybe those students that were going to Eston it's a little further and maybe now they're free yeah <laughs> right. two miles so maybe mm -hmm. now they're busing or something I think it would be interesting to see if the the new elementary school changes the, yep. the trajectory of busing absolutely Liz, did you get that too? I did. Just in case I have some sort of a <laughs> mini Let me know. I can ask you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anything else? Okay. We'll move on to the donation from CAF America. So I, I just want to inform the committee. Um, Thank you very much to, to the 3M Corporation. 3M Corporation managed this six thousand dollar donation to the district mm -hmm. through caf which stands for charities aid foundation i think they just handle um donations they are some sort of company and that's what they do but this is from 3m in rockland so we appreciate them very much um two thousand dollars of the six will be going to the phelps library to uh, inject some additional stem uh, books for that library and four thousand dollars of the six will be used for stem education at the elementary so we really appreciate them they come in every year they do work with us um, we're building that partnership with 3m and um, they're very excited by the new building and the new spaces that we have and so it's proven to be a great partnership so big shout out to 3m in rockland for that donation Great. Yes. Wonderful. Town wide right there, right? Absolutely. All circles back to our students here. So thank you for 3M. And we'll send them a thank you note. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. All right. Back to you, Dr. Cron, with the superintendent's report. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate two middle school students, John Marrero and Lycia Nassif who are this year's New England League of Middle Schools Distinguished Student Award winners. Normally, Ms. Shipper and those students come to, to our meeting. Um, unfortunately, this meeting, um, Ms. Shipper is at another award ceremony, and the next meeting, all those students will be in Philadelphia. So you're stuck with just me reading their names and saying congratulations. But again, John Marrero and Lycia Nassif. So congratulations to them. Um, my second item is I would like to offer our condolences to the family of Claire Garvey. Claire Garvey worked for the Rockland Public Schools for 38 years as a secretary. And we appreciate her service, and we honor and remember her, um, Claire Garvey. So thank you very much. Um, and I would also like to remind the public, my third item, that we have a number of summer programs running. And we have special education programs that are running. So if, you're, if your child is in special education, you will know about this already. But we also are running some special camps this summer um, for English language learners. And we are expecting at this point about 100 students in that program. And we are scholarship, we are offering scholarships to approximately 40% of those students. So. My point for bringing it up here is 
if your child, um, if you're interested in your child being in any kind of an enrichment program over the summer, or you're looking for some additional summer uh, programming for your child, please reach out to your principal because we are offering some tremendous programs over the summer and we don't want money to be um, a hindrance to your child participating, so please reach out. So I'm very, very pleased about those. And then my final item is, um, this past week we had a, a young man struck by a car who was driving his bike um, to school in the morning. And it was right by town hall by the entrance to the superintendent's office. And so I only bring this up, this, the, the driver did absolutely nothing wrong. She was not cited. Um, she was coming down the driveway down um, McKinley Way, turned left into um, town hall area, and a student, there were two kids on bikes who were zooming past the car. One went to the right, one went to the left, the one went to the left got hit, and um, the person driving never had a chance to see. So I bring this up because I want to ask parents to please remind your children um, to please be safe on their bikes and be careful. And then when you're driving around school, I think most people are, but just be extra careful. It is spring and summer and kids are on their bikes more and they're maybe running around a little more, so just be vigilant, please. Um, the young man had a little knot on his head. He went to the hospital, but he's fine. Um, so thankfully for that, but just gives us an opportunity to remind everyone to be safe. So that's all I have. Thanks, Dr. Cron. Welcome. Any comments or questions? Just uh, to thank the, the fire department and police department. Uh, they was right by me. I was on Union yeah. Street. So yeah. um, this, uh, just thank you for the quick response uh, to keep our students safe. So yeah, absolutely. And often Officer Schnabel for sort of investigating to see and yep. make sure um, what needed to transpire after. So, all right. We will go on to our public service announcements. I'm going to start to the left as usual. Okay, so I have a couple of announcements from the WRPS station. The first one is Rockland High School student, Rocco Carrera, and I hope I pronounced your name correctly, mm -hmm. did a great job. He was acting as MC throughout the art festival, and all of his interviews with both the participants and the attendees have been uploaded, and they're ready for viewing on the WRPS YouTube channel. And the second announcement was today was the filming of the second part of the anti-drunk driving video in collaboration with the Rockland Police Department. And when the third part is completed within the next couple of weeks, then all of those will also be uploaded and available for anyone on the WRPS YouTube channel. You can still view the 2017 original video on the WRPS YouTube channel. Very good. I was going to say, that's probably how they're watching us <laughs> live, right? Um, um, All eight of them. <laughs> um, I have just, I guess, two announcements. Um, Memorial Day, obviously no school on Monday. Um, and we do have a great Memorial Day celebration. Um, the three uh, elementary schools get together every year at the Veterans Memorial Stadium. It is this Friday on the 26th at 9.30. And the kids do an amazing job. Um, and they have... Sergeant Dan Clark, the singing trooper, as the master of ceremony. So it's always a, a fun um, experience. I welcome, I guess, the, the community. If you want to come see it in the stadium, uh, we welcome you. And then just uh, congratulations to the seniors. Tomorrow is your last day. Um, and prom is Friday, graduation next week, a lot of exciting activities. So just uh, be safe out there um, as you go through these exciting uh, last couple weeks. That's okay. it. That's it. Thank you. Ms. Davidson? Um, I would also like to thank the Rockland Fire Department, the police station, school staff, and um, the Magoon Biggins Funeral Home today for their um, demonstration of the drunk driving stimulation for the juniors and seniors. Um, it's definitely emotional for many students, and I think it went off well. Very well. Um, and also stay state stay safe the next couple of weeks um while you are enjoying your last few days of school even though it's tomorrow but there's a lot to celebrate and some fun activities coming up um so enjoy but also be careful and that's all i have thank you 
And I just wanted to say that we are all looking forward to all of the ceremonies and things that we get invited to as school committee members. Mm -hmm. um, we get to sit here together every other week and sort of go over finances and policy. But to me, that's like the icing on the cake, getting to see your families um, enjoy in the um, end of your sort of season here in the school um, and all of these little ceremonies we get to go to. So that I am looking forward to. Um, Rockland Education Foundation does a, an outstanding job making sure that we receive um, lots of funds towards all different sorts of um, education here in the Rockland school system. They have donated, awarded, I'll say, $890,000 in grants. Um, and so they have an annual golf tournament that is coming up. It's their 27th annual tournament. And it is on June 30th at the Ritter Golf Club. You can go on to, um, you can email slonergan at rocklandschools.org or reach out to Sue at 781-258-5359 if you would like to participate in golf. Um, or they always do other little fundraiser things that help, um, such as items donated for raffle and things like that to help raise money um, at the golf tournament. And then I wanted to shout out to our very own Ava Hagen, um, who helped out. She is our student rep, but she isn't here tonight. But she is um, always important to us. They ha she helped out with the bottle and can drive um, this past Saturday for the Rotary Club. So thank you, Ava, for that. And a shout out to senior Emma Cameron. Um, she did the Global Ambassador Project last Thursday, which I missed because I was at a track meet. Um, but she did it, um, the benefits of Mediterranean lifestyle from her trip to Italy in April. And sorry, I missed it, but from what I hear, it was wonderful. And thank you for doing that. Um, it's always cool, I think, to see what these kids bring back when they go on these trips that we get to hear about. So thank you and shout out to her, Senior Emma Cameron. I was able to attend and I uh, very much enjoyed it. Made me uh, want to travel to Italy <laughs> and eat all the amazing fresh food. So good job, Emma. All right. Anything else? No? Okay. That's all I had. That was my list. <laughs> um, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And second. All those in favor? That's a vote. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.